the International Workers' Day is celebrated worldwide on May 1st, and it is a public holiday. This day commemorates the struggle of workers for better wages and working conditions, and it is marked with parades, speeches, and celebrations nationwide. The aim of the holiday is to recognize workers' contribution to the development of the nation and to encourage them to work harder towards achieving greater progress. Now, the General Secretary of the Private Telecoms and Communications Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Texan, Abdullah Okono, joins me now to discuss further on the welfare of Nigerians. Happy Workers' Day to you, Abdullah. Thank you so much. Happy Workers' Day to you too. Thank yeah. you. Yes, it is indeed. My pleasure to have you here. Let's talk about uh, Workers' Day in Nigeria. We've been celebrating since 1980, and um, different governments have come and gone. Would you really say that uh, the workers uh, have been actually given their right place uh, as it should be here in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much once again for having me. It's All my right. pleasure always to always be on your show. Yeah. It's uh, actually, uh, yeah, I want to say that uh, the work workers in Nigeria have not really been given their rightful place, uh, you know, though we have to be objective about it all. You get to see that uh, virtually everywhere in the part, in every part of the world, workers are not really given their due uh, recognition. But uh, as you know, it is embedded in the in the uh, in the psyche of the workers to always force the, their way <clears throat> into the uh, scheme of things. You know, so workers are not uh, given their due place, like I said earlier. But uh, as you know, this is like, that's where we get the word uh, Aluta Continua, Victoria, Asata. That's where it comes in. That is, we keep struggling, we keep demanding for what is what is due to us. So in Nigeria, Nigeria is not, also not an exception. We have been striving, we have been struggling, we have been fighting to be heard, and we will continue to do that. All right, tell about Nigerian workers. May 1, every day, there are parades all over the country. President, state governors give speeches. Even the Nigeria Labor Congress, uh, you know, goes out for parades across um, the various state capitals. You know, but uh, this year, it is uh, a year where there will be a new administration uh, sometime uh, this month, as it were, this month of May. But the question right now would be, uh, would you say that uh, over time the issue of uh, minimum wage and welfare of workers have actually been addressed? Because after much um, cry, uh, the workers' wages uh, or their wage was actually increased to 30,000 naira. And this year, this present administration also promised to increase workers' pay by 40%, despite the fact that inflation has increased by 85%. How did you really greet this uh, development, the planned increment of workers' salaries. Mm, okay, thank you so much. Uh, the planned increment of salary by 40% as announced by the Buhari administration is a welcome development. Like uh, we say in the local palace, have a uh, loaf of bread is better than uh, nothing, you know. So it's a welcome development, but we have the opinion that, yes, the government can do far better than that. Just based on what you just uh, asserted now, the inflation rate is over 80 percent, but uh, that means uh, the increment is not commensurate to to the inflation rate. Perhaps I want to believe that by the time the organized labor sit down with the government, they will they will reason with us and they do the needful rather than the. Uh, giving us 40%, they'll make it at, uh, at least that 80% that you just mentioned about, yes. All right, still talking about uh, workers' welfare, most people still have um, issues of unionization at places where they work, and over time we've had issues of um, uh, unfriendly labor practices and maltreatment of workers just because uh, they uh, want to be unionized, but... Uh, most of the organizations or some organizations are saying that they cannot uh, do that. So how would uh, labor come in or, or how has labor fed in, the, in this particular issue of uh, where workers are actually denied what is due them because their employers don't want them to unionize? Mm, 
it has not been easy actually i must i must let you know in terms of unionization of workers in nigeria uh, it will interest you to know that uh, the government is even doing far better than the, the private sector you know public sector is doing a lot better than the private sector in the private sector it has always been a talk of war but uh, i can assure you that uh, we are not relenting we are not relenting it has not been easy though and they uh, are almost majorly the these employers in the private sector they ride on the fact that uh, a lot of workers are always very pensive they are always frightened they they are afraid of associating with a union when you meet with them they tell you that yes unionism is the way best way unions are there to protect us they will fight for our rights they will improve our welfare where we work but yet they will tell you that ah, i don't want to be sacked i don't want to lose my job but what we always tell them is that even if you uh, do not associate yourself with a uh, with a uh, union you have always been experiencing sack incessant uh, harassment intimidation and all whatnot so we keep encouraging them to do so but uh, and the another important thing again from what you just said now yes we hear it but uh, we have not really seen uh, evidential uh, a document backing it up where an employer will tell will state it categorically black and white that uh, his employees should not join uh, a union of uh, in their sector if we are able to see that I want to employ you in case you have any company in that regard or workers that are experiencing such, please bring it to our notice. We so much appreciate to have that. And uh, if, you, if you can lay a hand on just one employer to serve as a deterrent to others, we'll make sure that we use such an employer as a scapegoat. So wow. to, to go back to your question properly again, is that it has not been easy. It has not been an easy task at all, but we have been pushing hard. And uh, we, we, at this point, I will also want to implore the Ministry of Labor, who is the supervising ministry pertaining to uh, labor and the productivity in the country, to also sit up because a lot of them, when issues arise and there is a need for de for their intervention, it does not really come for, uh, it doesn't come as quick as it should be. So you know, this is part of the reasons why these uh, employers in the private sector seem to be having a few day. Oh. But I can assure you that uh, trade unions in the private sector they are not uh, they are not uh, resting on their hours. They are working so hard to make sure that uh, workers, irrespective of their status oh. and their, their um, uh, designation, are unionized. All right. Uh, uh, Bly, I know over time we have talked about um, some issues, specifically in your sector, which is um, the telecommunication sector. Over time, we've seen bigger telecoms um, giants uh, here in the country, international ones, who are resident here in the country. Over time, uh, the big positions, as it were, are given to expatriates, uh, while um, Nigerians, who are also capable, are actually pushed to the background. What has um, the NOC uh, or your unions um, done to address such issues? Yeah, I'm gonna thank you so much for this question. Our union has been doing a lot, a great lot in this regard. And I can assure you that uh, to a very large extent, though we may not want to over-exaggerate things in, within the sector that uh, we have uh, eradicated totally, we have not been able to do so. But I can assure you that uh, maybe, let's say, 100% as it used to be, we have reduced it to the barest minimum, say, uh, below 40%. It has not been easy, you know, but I tell you that we are really battling it. We are, we are working assiduously to ensure that things are not done. Because all multinationals, they must abide by, by our laws, most especially when it has to do with the expatriate uh, quota policy, you know, which stipulates that um, for every expatriate that will be coming into the country, there must be three Nigerians attached to such uh, expatriates. So, and apart from that also, there must be a need, meaning that the expertise uh, must be seen in Nigeria or must be absent rather from Nigeria. That is to say that Nigerians do not have that prerequisite uh, qualification to do the task. 
before such an expatriate can come down to Nigeria. And once the expatriate is here in Nigeria, three Nigerians must be attached to such expatriates for him, I mean, for, for the expatriate to, to put them up to speed, to train them such that when he leaves, they will have enough uh, hands to take over such uh, roles. Uh, Private Telecommunications and Communications Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, we have been doing a lot. I can, um, for, uh, I'm sure you may not be comfortable with me mentioning names, no, I but uh, I can assure you that there are some companies mm. that we are aware of that we have tackled and we have ensured that such expatriates uh, leave Nigeria for good. All right. Uh, I want to understand uh, what um, the Nigerian labor laws, uh, what they say concerning the issue of casualization of workers, because uh, it still is, it is still an issue here in the country where you know most people are just uh, working on temporary basis or they are seen as casual staff and they are not getting the fringe benefits or the entitlement you know that they should be getting when they actually do so much work so what does the law says uh what does it sorry say rather about um, the issue of uh, casualization of workers in the country mm, if you asked me eh, like you just did now justin i'll tell you that uh, uh, i'm not sure the Nigerian law is uh, so protective of uh, employees because in some of uh, some aspect of our labor act, if you go through, they will tell you that there are temporary, there can be temporary employment and permanent employment. You know, meaning that uh, they give room for uh, these employers to hide under under heat to give some people temporary employment. And uh, but uh, by and large, the uh, the, the, the laws, our laws pertaining to labor have been reviewed and uh, hopefully a lot of uh, these misgivings or the shortcomings that we have noticed will be, will be uh, rectified everywhere in the world. People, uh, the labor movements frown at or frown against casualization. Casualization is one thing that should not be encouraged. But uh, another thing, uh, uh, one important thing I need to mention here is that in this country of ours now, people are now, employers are now hiding under outsourcing. Mm. Mm. They term it as, as outsourcing, but in the in reality, the way it plays out, the way they, they, they carry out the process, you see that it's actually a case of a casualization. We have a company presently which we are tackling uh, which we have, uh, and thanks to your station that uh, you did a, a, a bit for us in um, uh, publicizing it. We shall be embarking on a three day warning strike effective uh, Tuesday. That is the day uh, tomorrow, uh, that's a day after the workers' day. So, in this company, they tell you that they are trusting, getting project from the telcos, and uh, for them to to win those projects, they have given the impression to the telcos that yes, they have the way with that to to manage the I mean to take I mean to do the the project effectively. Meaning that they also have the personnel that are that can carry out those work. But what you notice is that in turn they also now subcontracts to other commercial companies. Mm. Then these commercial companies also in turn will now hand them over to another set of companies. And you get to ask these workers that who are your employers? And the workers grown up for goodness sake, they will be telling you that they do not really know who their employers are. In some instances, you see that the employers, some I mean some companies will be the ones that will be paying their uh, allowances and then the other one will be paying their salaries. So these are some of the things we are tackling this company on. We are taking the Huawei technologies on. And we will, we will not rest until things are done normally. We cannot just come from all the way from Asia and be, be enslaving our people in this country. It is a no-no. It is something we will fight them to a standstill to ensure it is eradicated in that company. Then apart from the apart from Huawei Technologies Nigeria Limited, other companies within the sector also, we are beaming our searchlights. In them, but we are starting with Huawei. By the time we are done with them, All right, uh, yes, every other one will also have to sit up.
All right, it is May Day celebration right now. You know, so what is the hope of uh, the average worker in Nigeria in 2023 at a time where uh, they go to the markets today uh, to buy uh, maybe just um, rice and the next day they go to the same market and um, the price has actually doubled. As we celebrate May Day, as we celebrate International Workers Day, what is the future for the Nigerian worker? Is there any hope as we celebrate or is there any reason to even celebrate Workers Day? Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Justin. On this, I will say that uh, as long as there is life, there is always hope. Oh. Uh, Nigerian workers should be hopeful that things will be get better, things will get improved. In the before now, we are talking about uh, less than about seven thousand five hundred naira minimum wage, and today we are talking about thirty percent. And uh, uh, this government has also announced that forty percent increment will be done. Oh. You know, and uh, that is we have not even sat down with them to negotiate a new minimum wage. But on their own, considering the fact that uh, for them to have recognized the upper inflation that we experience in the country, they had uh, proposed that uh, forty percent will be increased in their. In the, in the in the wages so by the time we we meet with them we negotiate obviously we have to do something higher than the 40 percent that they had proposed right now so in all of this there is hope as long all as right. we are alive there's there always hope all right i must say a very big um, thank you to you i have been speaking with abdullah okono he is um, the general secretary of the private telecommunications and communication senior staff association of nigeria texas and thanks for joining us in this uh, may day celebration Thank you so much for um, having me. And just before we go on the show, there is a knowledge gap and information in Africa, and as such, people need to understand that what they need to do and apply information to create wealth. This formed part of this course at the Wealth Creation Summit organized by Knowledge Digest Africa with speakers from around the world. The details in this report, and I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for watching. Online platforms are offering wealth management services and delivering faster customer growth, cheaper cost structures, and superior innovation, and therefore command a significant market premium, which is threatening the market dominance of traditional players. As far as you have and feel, people will be willing to pay for. Number two question we are going to ask today is what is the value proposition you want to present? To the Experts have converged on this hall to provide startups, SMEs, and career professionals with the opportunity to deepen the conversation. So I believe in mentorship or grassroots because I know that if the curriculum can be restructured, many people are going to understand entrepreneurship, uh, management of skills, and all of that, which basically is not happening currently in the curriculum of our country, Nigeria, and in many parts of the African country. And that's what we are trying to do, to bring, uh, uh, to bring knowledge closer with practical experience. It looks informal, but has a lot of detail about giving results. The discussion center on starting and growing business, monetizing digital skills as well as tech innovation for productivity and profitability at work. Entrepreneurs are also advised to have a good knowledge of what they want to do. I mean, before you go into putting money into cryptocurrency, do you understand what cryptocurrency is? Do you have the, the skill and the education required to actually put your money into that? I always advise people, start by knowing what you want to put your money into. There are so many platforms where you can invest money. Because if you are going into forest market, we are trading 6.6 .6 trillion every day. And you don't want to go in there and just throw money elsewhere. Start by learning. My coming here is to bring practical experience, is to bring uh, what I would call working information that can help these young minds transform the mind. It's really a mind game. Once the mind can be transformed and at that base of it, that grassroots, that background of it, it's going to change everything. Young people are well represented at the summit and the academics are speaking on the essence of being future ready by bringing the town and gown together in the co-production knowledge. The essence of the Aritoa is to produce human resources for the, those in the industry. But there seem, from what you have seen in the past, there seems to be a gulf. Because sometimes you have seen employers complaining about, the, talk about the quality, it's not the quality of the graduate per se, 
But they're talking about those graduates that are work ready, that are employment ready. And that's why we thought that for us to be able to achieve that, the two must come together. Findings show that despite geopolitical and economic destabilizers such as inflation and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, approximately 80 trillion US dollars in new wealth is likely to be created over the next five years. Thank you.